Hi, I'm Kim. You're watching Kim Wilson TV. My channel is dedicated to helping victims of narcissistic abuse get free and stay free. Now, for anyone who's been discarded by a narcissist, you may have found yourself in a state of utter shock and horror by how quickly they move into a new relationship. I mean, your side of the bed has not even gone cold and there's somebody else sleeping in it. I want to talk about that today. I think most normal, sane, healthy, well-adjusted people who are emotionally intact would agree that once a relationship, especially a relationship that you believed was important, has ended, most people are going to take some time, the necessary time to reflect on what happened, why it didn't work, maybe even to grieve the loss of that person in your life. But not the narcissist. Nope, they're moving at hyperspeed to to get the next victim in there. And in many cases, oh my God, if I had a dime for every time I've heard this one, are engaged to be married within three, four months. Now you may wonder how a new victim uh, could fall for this accelerated idealization, love bombing, and absolute breakneck speed towards solidifying a relationship. But let's not forget, many of us fell for that too. So why is the narcissist moving so quickly once the relationship is over? Uh, well, there's a really strong likelihood that they have not started this pursuit of a new victim once you leave. The likelihood, uh, to be honest, is that this new victim was already put in place before you left with their anticipation of you leaving. Anytime uh, the narc gets sort of wind of your exit strategy or just gets that exit vibe, uh, it's now confirming in their minds that you can't be trusted, that you are going to abandon them. This sends them into absolute catastrophic narc injury. So well before you've left, they have already begun the pursuit of a new target to ensure a really quick transition. So you can be out by noon and the new victim can be in by 1215. This is happening for a number of reasons. First and foremost, they have experienced a grave narcissistic injury because of your departure. Rather than coil up on the floor and lick their wounds, they find it easier. They find it more comfortable if they can get a new victim. Uh, typically now they're you know, heavily de uh, depending on their sexual vampirism to kind of feed that loss of your supply, just some emergency temporary supply. So initially, it's going to be sex supply, uh, in my opinion, that they're immediately going after because for them, uh, they can just, you know, recycle, regurgitate something up out of the narc harem quite typically and kind of smooth over that narc injury for the first short period right after your departure. Now, NARCARA members are emergency supply, uh, negative supply, or low-grade supply because they really do not respect or, or admire these people in any way. And, of course, the quality of supply is going to de be dependent on the person they're getting the supply from. So if these are kind of low-grade NARCARA members, the supply is not going to be good quality supply, just low-level supply, and they're not going to be able to deal with this low-level supply for very long. They will either be trying to groom this new target, this uh, recycled member of the NARC harem, uh, trying to groom it into a better source of supply, which typically isn't going to happen. If they don't initially really see someone as superior, they're not really able to kind of change their mind about that as time goes on. Uh, once you're kind of deemed low-level supply, you're kind of always low-level supply, unable to work your way up the NARC food chain. So quite often when they're using this emergency narc harem supply just to kind of smooth over their injury, uh, they are at this point actively looking for a new long-term target, someone they're going to see as a better source of supply. Now, of course, the narc's brain scrambled at the best of times, but during these transitional periods where they've lost primary supply, they're scrambling, you know, for emergency supply or low-grade sex supply, trying to find a new target. At these times, you're going to find yourself likely being hoovered because they are going to be just 
ricocheting negative emotion. They're not going to be able to really get their head around what's happening. They're going to know something horrible's happened in their life. They are not going to be able to assume any responsibility or truly see the role they've played in it. It's kind of more like watching a horror movie for them. Trevor was never able to even take a day break after my departure. I will guarantee you that every time I left, there was someone new in the bed the very uh, same night as I left. And I'd actually come to almost expect this. In fact, Trevor referred to them as hate fucks when I did try to talk to him about it and said, you know, I, I found it kind of offensive that you didn't even spend a night alone missing me and you'd be screaming, What's the matter with you? They're just hate fucks. They're hate fucks. Like we've all got hate fucks or something. Though I wasn't really able to understand, you know, his dialogue about the hate fox and his uh, confusion as to why I didn't understand him hate fucking people. But I'll tell you what I did get from that. I really heard loud and clear that he simply couldn't be alone in his own skin. He loathed, detested, was so shamed by himself that he simply could not be left alone even one night in his own skin. But I think in addition to that, they're so narc injured that they need a sounding board. They need a pair of ears sitting across from them, someone, anyone to listen about how horrible you were. What a liar, what a cheat, what a thief, what a moron, what an idiot, uh, what a slut, what a fiend. I mean, I mean, that's what they need because now they need to rewire their brain. They cannot accept your loss as a personal loss. So they have to convert you into some sort of demon in their mind and in the mind of someone else. And they do this through relentless dialogue. They just keep telling this new person how horrible you were, how glad they are that you're gone, and they just keep the dialogue going until they actually believe it. This new unsuspecting person, even if it's a regurgitation out of the narc harem, um, not knowing what's going on, you know, and being bombarded with how horrible you are, does start to feel like they need to defend the narc uh, from the evil you, the evil me. And this is the creation, of course, of the flying monkey. The creation of a flying monkey uh, gives them another person to validate the bullshit they're creating. Uh, it's someone else to validate how horrible you were. And now they're creating a wolf pack, uh, someone to help them with the smear campaign against you because the smear campaign is coming no matter what. Now, this is the irony in all of this. This is the absolute contradiction and insanity in this. Now, the narc has recognized that you want out. So rather than try to control their behavior, which they can do, they are definitely capable of controlling their behavior. But this image, this fake image that they must present to the world is now being exposed, which has now turned you in their eyes into just a useless ship pile because they can no longer fool you. So rather than try to apologize or get sincere about an apology or try to correct the behavior, once they sense that you've seen behind the mask, once they sense that you're on to them, they need to now eliminate you and they need the help of someone to, well, validate uh, their bullshit. They need a sounding board for the abusive dialogue about you in the smear campaign they're launching. It's typically this first person, once you've left, that helps them get the momentum up for the smear campaign. So there's a lot of reasons why you were replaced so quickly. This can be extremely painful being discarded and replaced like that, but I have to tell you, I find a lot of comfort, a lot of happiness in just thinking, I don't care who he's with, thank God it isn't me, and thank God it isn't you if you're free today. So if you're free, stay free. I'm Kim. You're watching Kim Wilson TV. I hope you guys are having a great NARC-free day.